Hello and welcome. I am Susanna Playstead, bringing you a recap of what architects need to know from Trailblazer DX24, including the latest AI innovations and what they mean to architects. So to get you caught up, there's been a lot going on, but I am joined by some of Salesforce's newest architect evangelists, Nevi Van Wright, Justin Byhowski, and Shobi Abdi. Welcome everyone. Hey, How are you? Susanna. You. Happy to be here with you. <laughs> so y'all have been very busy. Everyone's been busy. There have been so many exciting announcements here at this event. So how should architects wrap their minds around all of this new technology? Let's start with you, Nithya. Yeah, it's a great question. We got to see really great innovation yesterday in Einstein One Studio and all of the builders that are available. It could be overwhelming. Yes. As an architect, I recommend that you think about the use cases that your organization's trying to solve for, and then think about how this innovation can help you do that. I would also encourage you to think about the well-architected framework. Think about trusted, think about easy, and think about adaptable, and how those tenets or standards can help you achieve your goals. I love what you said about finding a use case first. Yeah. I think it's so tempting, right? All of these things look so cool, especially for folks who are builders, our admins, our developers, they're like, they want to get their hands on the technology. But as architects, we have to come in. <laughs> we have to say like, let's make sure that the project we're taking on, the requirements, we need to make sure that what you are looking for can be delivered with the right product, and we're really that sort of grounding force. And a grounding force for architects is Salesforce well-architected. So exactly. I think that's just a wonderful way to think about how architects should be designing, thinking about solutions, and it's a great model for architects to use right in their day-to-day -day work, but it's also, I think, a great mental model for us to keep in mind for this conversation. So Shobi, with the well-architected framework in mind, you know, what should architects think about delivering that trusted AI and how they can do that in a really healthy way? Yeah, absolutely, Susanna. So, when you look at all the great innovations that we recently released in the Einstein One Studio, like Copilot Builder, Model Builder, Prompt Builder, all the builders, <laughs> all right? The builders. We've introduced all of these. Now, one of the things that architects need to keep in mind is that they're all developed on a foundation of trust, utilizing the Einstein trust layer. But when you're implementing it on behalf of your customers and our customers, like, trust doesn't just end with what we've built. Exactly. Right? So then where do you go? When you're looking to implement, when you're looking to get a prompt going, is this the right prompt? Am I doing the right feedback loop and all that? That's where the prescriptive capabilities of the well-architected framework come in. And really focusing on that trusted element of secure, liable, compliant. What all that allows you to do is really trust in not only what we've built from a product perspective, but when you're building on top of it on behalf of your customers and our customers, <laughs> that that trust still keeps going forward, right? That when it gets in the real point. world. I think that's such a good point. So we're, you know, you're starting with good tools. So you think of like a, an architect for a building, right? You like pick out the right pieces, you're using the Einstein platform, you're using all the builders. That's a great place to start. You're like exactly. starting with good quality materials. But as an architect, you know, you're coming in and then you need to figure out how all these pieces get put together and you can't just assume that just because you have good good materials that yeah. the solution is going to be built in a well-architected manner. So Justin, talking yeah. about really, so we, we talked about trust, right? We mm -hmm. talked about trust, we talked about um, how to build solutions that are really going to protect your business and your stakeholders, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but Salesforce, right? Yeah. Salesforce is different, we know this conference is different. Yeah. <laughs> All of these things that are really uniquely Salesforce for me, yeah. One of the things that is unique is that you can get started really fast, right? You don't have to be yeah, a developer. Absolutely. Admins can get started fast with all of this technology. Yeah. But you don't just want to get started fast and build these things without right. thinking about the impact of your business, right? right? And that's, again, the job of an architect. Yeah. So how should architects think about all of this new technology in a way that's easy? Yeah, absolutely. Well, starting first with the speed idea. Speed to value is so critical for architects when they are working on Salesforce solutions. I love uh, Einstein and the Copilot Builder uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one thing is there are a lot of standard and custom actions right in there that you can start with ASAP. Start right now, you don't need a six month delivery project. You can turn them on in the system and start using them in an appropriate way. Um, for those that are advanced enough to have code or Apex capabilities or the ability to write flows, you can actually do that on top of to enhance those custom or standard actions. And finally, if you're using your current, in your current code base, Einstein can really, really speed that up. So all of those, those things are good for speed. Yeah, 
Okay. Now, as architects though, it can't just be fast. We can't just be saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, because we can and because it's fast. Um, you know, I really encourage architects to look into the well-architected framework um, and be intentional. Um, that's a big part of the framework is intentionality around the solutions that you're building. Be intentional and be strategic. Do it for your business. Um, do it in a way that makes sense. I like to say AI with purpose. Um, it should be embedded. Your company's value should be embedded in what you're doing. So you should do that and you should do it fast. <laughs> I think that's so great. And we have to remember, right, so easy is a pillar yep. in the well-architected framework, but it's um, easy solutions deliver business value fast. Yes. So it's not, you're not just delivering right. technology fast, yep. you're delivering that business value to your end users. And I think the other piece that struck me about all the builders mm -hmm. is how extensible they are, right? We're talking about not just business value today, but we're talking about business value in the long run. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it used to be pretty hard to predict what our business users were going to want. We were like, they have lots of, you know, priorities change, right, yeah. in the business. But I think now more than ever, things are moving really, really fast. Very fast. So Nivea, how should our architects think about building adaptable solutions that really can evolve with the business? Yeah, adaptable is the exact right word for this time. AI is disrupting organizations that are needing to rethink their strategy. And when you think about solutions, think both short term and long term, and think about building solutions that are resilient, easy to adjust to the needs of your business. As you think about competing priorities, it really requires some intensive design thinking about your business and your users' needs. And as architects, we sit in a special place in that we get to think critically both about what the needs are, but then what those future needs are. And here's a place where you get to tap in at TDX and really see what's coming for both today and tomorrow and plan accordingly. Oh, I think that's so great. So for architects, it's really a lot of responsibility, right? Our builders are so excited to get their hands on the product. We need to get our hands on the products as well to understand how to advise their teams. But where could architects go to get some maybe guidance on what they should do or what they should avoid when it comes to AI? Yeah, definitely architect.salesforce.com. You'll be able to use the framework there. Not only is the framework there, but there are additional tools mm -hmm. and about diagrams and then also our decision guides. So I think that it's a great place to start and be able to leverage both, not just for your today projects, but also your tomorrow projects. Oh, I love that you mentioned um, the different tools. So architect.salesforce.com is where you can get access to the well-architected framework again that you can apply to these new innovations that we talked about. But it's not just well-architected that's Correct. on that site. There's also Salesforce Diagrams, which is one of our, actually one of our most popular products for architects. Shobi, tell us a little bit about Salesforce Diagrams. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I like all architects understand about Salesforce Diagrams is that people like seeing pictures more than they like seeing text, <laughs> right? A it's simple as that. A thousand, thousand words, words right? right? One of the interesting things is, and we actually have a session coming up about it here at, uh, at TDX, is that often when you look at the well-architected framework or looking at patterns and anti-patterns, you look at it, the text, and you say, okay, how do I convey this in a way that it can be applied to both business and technical stakeholders? Mm. So when you look at our diagramming framework, what it really allows you to do is take those dense concepts, visualize them in the scope of that organization's business, and then convey them to all kinds of stakeholders at multiple levels. Mm -hmm. That's what makes the diagramming framework so robust. You, it's across multiple tools. You could, if you're, if you're a Miro fan, Lucid fan, right. Google Slides, PowerPoint, all of those. In the end, it's all about aligning your stakeholders. And especially in this day of AI, if you haven't aligned your business and te technical stakeholders on what it takes to get AI ready to be trusted, easy, adaptable, then you're not going to have a great time. So the diagramming framework is going to come in handy very quickly. That's awesome. So we talked a lot about diagrams. We, we've touched on decision guides, the well-architected framework. There's really so much content um, for diagrams. Justin, I think we have yeah. a session, right? Coming up about diagrams? Coming up at three o'clock, we're even going to do a little bit of demoing of diagrams. Oh, yeah, yeah. and I think it'll also be available on our collection on Salesforce Plus, which is going to be fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me, Nivia, Justin, Shobi. This has been amazing. We have so much more content for architects coming throughout the year. This has just been a taste of some of the announcements that we've made here at TDX. We have a whole new team joining us in the Salesforce Architects. Team here at Salesforce, we're growing. It's really a really exciting time for architects in general at Salesforce. Um, and if you are watching online, if you want to dive deeper into TDX for architects, 
you're going to want to make sure that you explore our collection on Salesforce Plus. The link on the screen right now is sfdc.co slash p capital Z P H H. And to learn more about Salesforce Well Architected and all of the resources that we've talked about today, be sure to visit architect.salesforce.com. So again, thank you so much for joining me here. Thank you for joining me at home. We can't wait to see what you build with all this new exciting technology. Thank you, Susanna.